Jenny here. I was inspired uh, to share a story with you. So you just sit back and relax and enjoy the next few minutes while I bring you back to Greece. Greece back in the day when Zeus and Hera were up on Mount Olympus looking down over everyone on earth. River gods, wood nymphs, river nymphs, and humans looking after all of them. And in amongst all of those people and all of those creatures, there was one man in particular who was the son of a river god. And his name was Narcissus. And from the time he was born, Narcissus was the most beautiful baby, the most beautiful young man and young boy growing up. And as he grew into a young man, everybody wanted to be with him. He was pursued not just by women, but by men and by gods. He was pursued by anyone imaginable, but he rejected them all. He just was not attracted to any of them. He didn't think that they were good enough to be with him. And so he focused his talents on the hunt, and that's how he became such an amazing hunter. So we're going to leave him for a second. Where he liked to hunt, of course, was in the woods. Now, the woods today and in Canada are not like the woods in Greece back in the day. The woods in Greece were f full of magical and beautiful and incredible creatures, people and characters, and the nymphs were probably some of the most beautiful in the woods. And Zeus, god of gods, king of all the gods, he had a little bit of an affinity to go down to earth and frolic, shall we say, with the nymphs. With all sorts of nymphs, he loved them all. He thought they were all just breathtaking and beautiful. Now, for those of you who know your Greek mythology, you know he was married to Hera. Hera, the goddess of all goddesses and gods. And she was a very stoic, smart, clever woman. Goddess, not to be messed with. Well, there was this one time and Zeus was down on earth, and he knew Hera was coming after him. He knew. And so he pulled aside one of the wood nymphs from the forest. Her name was Echo. And he directed Echo. He said, Echo, you must protect me. You must keep Hera busy so I can get back to Mount Olympus. Well, no one refused Zeus. So Echo did what was asked. Now, the thing you need to know about Echo, other than the fact that she was a wood nymph and was just naturally very beautiful, is she had the most wonderful voice, and she loved to sing. But what she loved to do more than sing was talk. She loved to talk, and she'd tell stories, and everyone loved to listen to her. So as much as people loved to look upon Narcissus for his beauty, everyone loved to listen to Echo for her stories. Well... That was her skill. So as Hera came across the woodland, asking all of the wood nymphs, have you seen my husband? Where is Zeus? Have you seen Zeus? Because no one would ever argue with Hera. Echo stepped forward and said, Hera, you are looking lovely today. Why, you are so breathtaking. We are so honored and graced that you have come to our forest. And Hera wanted to ask her questions, but instead, Echo just kept talking and interrupting, and giving her gossip, hoping to buy some time, and she did. And she didn't do it once for Zeus, she did it a couple of times. And by the third or fourth time, Hera had caught on, and she was clever, as I said, and so she knew. And so she took Echo aside, and she said, no more, you must be punished for the wrong you have done. And so she did. And she took Echo aside, and she said, you have a lot to say, you have far too many words for a nymph. I am going to take your voice. Not all of it. You will have enough voice left to repeat the last few words of whatever anyone says to you, but you may never start a conversation. Only repeat those last few words. And she also banished Echo into the higher part of the forest, into the mountains, into the caves. And so Echo was destined to be by herself for the rest of her days. And she became very sad. One fateful day, that beautiful young hunter, Narcissus, entered the forest. 
and he was very hot from the hunt and he was very thirsty and so he was looking for water and looking for something to drink when he could hear behind him a crack of a twig. The crack of a twig was Echo. She was peering through the woods and she couldn't tell him but oh my gosh she had fallen deeply in love with him head over heels in love with Narcissus and she started to follow him any time he entered the woods and this one time she was very klutzy and she kept stepping on twigs and so he called out he's like who's there and all she could say is there 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 well Narcissus thought maybe it was his own voice coming back to him so he ignored it for a little bit but then he continued on and he heard again and he's like who is there come out come see me see me see me is all echo could say why don't we meet come to me and by this time echo was so overrun with love and emotion that she wanted to be with him that she jumped out from behind the trees and she flung her arms around Narcissus and Narcissus pushed her away and said away with you I would never love you I could never have someone like you love me never be off with you well Echo's heart broke there's nothing else she could do but leave him and so she just watched him from a distance for a long time and then the next thing that happened was he was out for a hunt another day and he was again very hot and thirsty and so he went to look for some water and he found this pool of water he had never seen before and it was silver and still and when he looked into the water he saw the most beautiful face he'd ever seen in his entire life and he went to reach for it and touch the cheek to say hello and as soon as he touched the water of course it disappeared and he's like, how cruel is this? As he turned to the gods, I finally find the love of my life. And every time I reach out, I can't touch them. And eventually, he stopped eating. And eventually, he just ended up dying there, looking at his own reflection. It was very sad, kind of. And Echo was in the forest watching and as Narcissus said to his reflection, I love you, Echo from the forest would say, I love you. And after he perished, there was a little yellow flower that grew up. And we call it today the daffodil. It's also known as the Narcissus flower. And it tilts its beautiful petals down towards the earth as though it's looking for its reflection in pools of water or grass that it grows by. Now what happened to Echo? Poor Echo. Poor Echo was so lost when he died and so heartbroken that she stopped to eat and she fled up to the caves and she stayed there and she perished. Everything except her voice. And her voice now remains all across the world. And any chance she has to speak with someone, she will. So if you hear an echo, it's likely echo echoing back to you. I hope that you enjoyed this version of the story of Narcissus and Echo. And I hope to bring you another one very soon. Have a great day, guys. Bye.